So, so my view of, uh, of the water situation is that we need, we need some major advances in technology to be able to, for example, reduce the cost of desalination and make it available to a much larger fraction of people on the earth. Right now it's too expensive. Filtering water is very crucial for the hydrogrommen project. We must make sure that the water put back into the aquifers is very pure and this is generally done by uh, filtration methods. Studying the technology of how water and salt water interact with various types of membranes is, a, is an absolute necessity to move forward on these more advanced uh, filtration concepts. Hi, I am Dr. Raj P. Ghosh, one of the co-founders of International Institute of Bengal and Himalayan Basin. Professor Sekely is one of the leading authority in water chemistry in the world, and we are very fortunate to have him lead us in our future activities. My group studies how water interacts with uh, solids, such as right now we're studying how water interacts with graphene. Uh, and these are very fundamental, fundamental aspects of water that remarkably are not well understood. So our approach is to look at very fundamental aspects of water and generalize this knowledge into uh, practically useful concepts for filtration, for, re for, for uh, desalination, and for actually uh, making water out of the sky. This oh. is a, a new exciting area Wonderful. with lasers. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you refer hydrogramins, that was the uh, technology developed by International Institute of Bengal and Himalayan Basins. A uh, lot of people work with me. It's about uh, eight Nobel laureates uh, in in California and beyond, and under the leadership of Professor Charles H. Towns. What is your thought, and uh, and and how we can be benefited from your work and your experience with desalination? I think, uh, actually, I, I would view desalination and hydrogrammin as complementary efforts that uh, have different domains of applicability. Hydrogrammin is beautiful in the sense that it's a concept that nature itself has used for many centuries where rainwater percolates into the aquifers, yes. it gets purified. Uh, we have depleted those aquifers, so right. uh, I, I think the key issue uh, in replenishing the aquifers in the Hydrogramen project is to not pollute the aquifers when we refill them. Yes. So we have to be excruciatingly careful with how, how we put water into the aquifers. We have to be sure that the water is properly filtered and doesn't contain uh, arsenic, for example, mm -hmm. doesn't contain radioactive elements in a harmful level of concentration. Uh, and I think the, the key technology uh, to doing this is new concepts of filtration based on new materials that are being developed uh, by a variety of people. For example, a, a very intensely uh, pursued subject in chemistry and physics these days is two-dimensional materials such as graphene, which is pure carbon made of uh, a, a plane or arrays of six-membered rings that has very special properties. And there are other uh, two-dimensional systems that are likely to have a big impact in the future on on how efficiently we can uh, filter salt water and polluted water. And that technology could then be used to effectively and safely refill the aquifers in the hydrogrammen project, mm -hmm. as well as impact uh, uh, desalination efforts too. So, uh, I think what you exactly express your concern is, is the concern of uh, Professor Towns also. Yes, my first encounter with Professor Charles Towns was a memorable one. In 1970, 
I uh, began graduate school at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, and I joined the group of Professor Claude Woods, who was a microwave spectroscopist. And when I went into his office to tell him that I would like to join his group, he agreed to accept me, and he reached behind his desk and pulled a, this book off of his shelf. The book was Microwave Spectroscopy by Charles Towns and Arthur Shallow, and he handed this book to me and said, this is the Bible, go read it. So my first introduction to Charles Towns was to go away and read his beautiful book on microwave spectroscopy, and I read it very carefully. That was my introduction to Charles Towns. And then uh, I read many of his papers as a graduate student. When I came to Berkeley as a professor in 1979, uh, people in the chemistry department knew of my respect and admiration for Charles Townsend. They took me over to his office in the physics department and introduced me to him. And then Charles Townsend invited me to attend his weekly research group meetings, which I did, so I had a pretty close association with him for the first few years I was at Berkeley. So I've always had great respect for him in many ways. Uh, Richard, would you kindly uh, tell us about your contribution in the water research and you have done a lot of work, extensive work and published about 450 scientific articles and supervised about 100 in, uh, PhD, PhD as well as postdoctoral candidates. Well, my, I, I believe the secret of uh, interacting with graduate students and postdocs is, is to make science fun. That's when it, everything works really well is when we're all just having fun doing science. And that's the, that's the atmosphere I try to maintain in my group, and it works really well. People, uh, professors at Berkeley, like myself, have a great advantage in the sense that we get the very best graduate students in chemistry in the world, and they're, they're so smart and they're so enthusiastic. It, it's so much fun to work with them. So um, it comes very naturally to have such a group. So uh, you also did a great deal of work on water chemistry and, and it's a very complicated subject and I've been doing the studying all my life and still I feel more I know, more I know how less I know and I sometimes I feel fish out of water. So, so my view of, uh, of the water situation is that we need, we need some major advances in technology to be able to, for example, reduce the cost of desalination and make it available to a much larger fraction of people on the earth. Right now it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is one of the areas that my, that my group um, does fundamental research in. If we could reduce the cost of desalination by a factor of 20, or 30 by new technology, this would have an enormous impact. So many people in the world are thinking about this, and the idea uh, that many have, uh, and our group is beginning to work on, is if, uh, if you confine water in, uh, uh, let's say, carbon nanotubes, con uh, confining water in a very small space, um, changes the properties of water and it, it water flows like a quantum mechanical object for example so I study such very fundamental aspects of water with the long-term goal of, uh, of uh, uh, developing some breakthrough new technology that could for example lower the cost of desalination by a factor of 50 or could uh, improve filters, which of course are very, filtering water is very crucial for the hydrogramin project. That we must make sure that the water put back into the aquifers is very pure. And this is generally done by uh, filtration methods. Uh, from your organizations, we can, we can learn about uh, how we can go about applying some of the technology here in the real world in complicated environments. So, oh, I think in that direction, we hope that you can lead us to the real prosperity and address the global water crisis 
and you were profoundly or deeply concerned about the global water crisis and we would like you to say a few words about the global water situation and how we can use our hydrogramming. Well, I think, in, in my opinion, um, one, one of the serious factors uh, that must be dealt with in the near future is the very rapid population growth in poor parts of the world. And, and couple that with climate change, what the, what the climate change scientists are telling us, that a, as the earth warms, the wet regions of the earth will get wetter and the dry regions of the earth will get drier. And it's estimated that uh, roughly 35% of the earth's population lives in dry areas that are already uh, marginal and that, so that situation is likely to become dire unless we, um, unless we develop some effective ways to produce and transport water in these, in these regions that are currently marginal uh, marginally dry and are likely to become much drier in the forthcoming decades. So uh, hydrogramin is a very intelligent solution. A as you know, uh, California has adopted this philosophy in the Central Valley that uh, because of the because of the five-year drought that has impacted California, um, uh, growers have turned to using groundwater to irrigate their crops and they are seriously depleting the aquifers in the Central Valley. So now the pro there's a project underway to try to refill these aquifers. And uh, I, s I think that's a very intelligent worldwide solution. But as, as you said, this must be done very carefully so that we don't make the problem worse by polluting those aquifers. Could you say a few words about Professor Glenn T. Seaborg, who is one of our co-founders and instrumental in the survival and moving forward with our work on hydrogramins? And I expressed my interest when I met him and talked to him that can I work with you and discover some elements? And he was telling, it is done. I want to work with you. <laughs> you want to do what you have been doing? If I start my new life, I'm going to start work on water. Yeah. Uh, he's your ex-colleague. For many years, you worked together. Yes, I, I had the, I had the uh, honor and good fortune to, to uh, teach freshman chemistry at Berkeley uh, with Glenn Seaborg. And I was able to watch him lecture to the class, and, and uh, he was a master at weaving uh, important social and political concepts in with the science. He would tell stories about how he worked, he worked closely as an advisor with five different presidents and how he would get phone calls early in the morning. I remember one story he, he told, he says, phone rang really early in the morning and he picked it up and he says, Glenn? He yeah. says, yes. He says, this is Jack. He goes, Jack. Jack Kennedy, <laughs> and, and Professor Kennedy, uh, President Kennedy had some important things to ask him about uh, nuclear arms control in, yes. in that day. But, but uh, in the course of teaching freshman chemistry with Glenn Seaborg, he was very interested in water chemistry, and um, uh, he talked about the importance of, of understanding the, the detailed water chemistry for the whole world. And um, I also remember when he would go, he would spend a lot of time going from laboratory to laboratory to interact with our very large freshman chemistry class with 1,500 students in it. And he would walk around and talk to them all about this and tell them how important the, uh, the aqueous chemistry of the elements that they were doing in the lab, how this was very important. and. They should learn it. He would sign his auto. He would autograph all of their lab books for them. He, he was a. And the other thing that was very interesting uh, about Glenn is he almost always carried a diary. Yes. With him, and whenever oh whenever something happened that he thought was notable, he would sit down. He, 
He'd, he would write a page in his diary <laughs> about this. He was very, Mattia, he had many volumes of his diaries, with, and I know that he condensed them into at least seven books. Mm -hmm. And by the way, mm -hmm. I notice uh, as, I, as I was reading about, as I was reading about the Hydrogrammon project, I, f I found this book, and uh, this is a book. This about, is written in this Bengali. Is, this is, this is uh, not very easy to read for me, <laughs> right. but it has part. This is the kind of thing Glenn Seaborg used to lecture on. Here's here's a chapter on identification of the acid radicals. That's the only <laughs> English words I can right. read here. <laughs> right. So you wrote this book. <laughs> yes, I wrote many before I came How? to England to read for PhD. I wrote about four or five of them. Four or, or five, five books like this. Yeah, it's, it's in English. Uh, first, and then I wrote the Bengali version. I also mm -hmm. wrote a textbook on higher secondary level or 12th grade, uh, mm -hmm. the two volumes, and also undergraduate chemistry called BSc chemistry. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't take any credit for them, although they were very successful nationwide. But I, with the moment I met Professor Karsho in England, my professor was an expert, leading expert in tropical medicine. I washed my hands and I'm going to do real research. Oh. <laughs> so, so anyway, these are these were good, but I I would not. I want to write something is real authority. Yeah. And, this is very uh, um, interesting, though, the, as you, you were asking me about Glenn Seaborg. These are the very kinds right. of things He's, he would he, talk about, and he would <laughs> talk to, uh, he was teaching students these very same experiments, but not in Bengali. <laughs> no. He did it in England. <laughs> no. no. So, so hmm. you are right. We will talk about all these, and I'm hmm. glad that you have a closer look at it, and hmm. that would help. And, and I, you say here also you uh, were. Uh, wh when uh, you were at Stanford in what year? Uh, I think it's early 1980s. 1980s. Uh, and the, we are the first people, a group of people, who uh, worked for NASA for global warming before uh, many years later Al Gore came into the global yeah. warming. So He invented our, it, didn't he? <laughs> <you? laughs> no. So we work on the, uh, the interaction of climate. And, and the, if you go globally, Eastern Hemisphere to Western Hemisphere, North to the Southern Hemisphere, then how the vegetation pattern changes. Uh, but the, I am not a plant biologist or anything, but I, my interest is in chemistry. So I focus on canopy chemistry, litterfall, and how the macro and micronutrients and the retranslocation how they purify the environment. It's a, it's a very interesting, it was a subject, and it was funded by US NASA and working in the Herrin Laboratories. We, we would also like to know a few words about Linus Pauling, if you have any association with him. Hmm. And, uh, well, I, ha I have an interesting lineage with Linus Pauling. Um, uh, through the academic circle. So I got my PhD at the University of Wisconsin working with Professor Claude Woods, microwave spectroscopy. Claude Woods got his PhD with E. Bright Wilson, microwave spectroscopist at Harvard, who was one of the great pioneers. E. Bright Wilson at Harvard got his PhD with Linus Pauling. Hmm. So I am, I am the academic Great grandson of of Linus Pauling, which is a great honor in in, in itself, and um, so there were two two uh, lines of evolution in the academic world uh, for microwave spectroscopy. One line was the Linus Pauling line with with uh, E. Bright Wilson and all the the many excellent microwave spectroscopists who came from Harvard out of E. B. Wilson's group. That's the that's the Linus Pauling descent, and then there's the Charles Towns line of descent. And by the way, Charles Towns, uh, after after uh, one of the major reasons that he got so interested in microwave spectroscopy was to use it to study molecules in space, and uh, he detected. The, the first molecules in interstellar space right, with, right. with it. And, and interestingly enough, uh, the, the second molecule that he, that he detected in interstellar space was water. 
-hmm. and he detected it as a maser. Initially, he could not find water, and later on, that's right. he was more serious and that's looked right. for it. You that's, know? So, that's right. So it was a very interesting situation, and it was, it was a very challenging. Yep. And he is like you, not only stick with the what he did, what he invented, so he got in various aspects of science, and even social justice. Uh, yes, Professor yeah. Town is also work on social justice yeah. with us, and and so he's a is a we call him a Renaissance man. We have a program or a video that developed by the, the Brian and a director uh, who is recording this. He, he was he was the person edited this UC wow. Berkeley YouTube. So uh, Brian's contribution to our organization is immense and and we are very grateful to Byron and uh, he's a true friend of IABB and as in that money cannot buy that friendship so I hope uh, you accepted our leadership and uh, we would like to look forward to work with you and see if you can help uh, every bit of help we can do is that the only thing we can do leading to the long-lasting real world peace uh, that is uh, that we are, all of our objective is the same. So your work is and your contribution is uh, is very unique, and the 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 future world, future generation will be benefited from your work. And we want to let this uh, future generation or our students in here and abroad knows your contribution and see how we can. Uh, help the developing countries also. Most of the signs and, and the research findings are not exposed to the people of poorer nations. I think we have obligation to bring those knowledge to the students of developing countries. And I am entitled to my opinion, so I am, uh, I am expressing it. It doesn't mean that you have people have to agree with it, but I think we, I strongly feel that these signs and knowledge and everywhere must go to the every door of the world in order to avoid a lot of adversity or disruption in the community at large. Uh, let me just say succinctly that I'm deeply honored that you invited me to join your, your organization and your, your projects to improve the life of people in Bengal and in California, and mm -hmm. I look forward very much Thank to you. And I have one request. Uh -huh. We need to make this fun. Okay, can you play? <laughs> so we'll sing good songs about water okay. in the near future. Okay. I will continue this program. <laughs> As free for hydrogrammings, that was the a technology developed by International Institute of Bengal and Himalayan Basins. A uh, lot of people work with me. It's about eight Nobel laureates uh, in, in California and beyond, and under the leadership of Professor Charles H. Towns. What is your thought and, uh, and, and how we can be benefited from your work and your experience with desalination.